San Francisco, vitamin D3 supplementation in people at high risk of developing diabetes, but who did not have vitamin D insufficiency does not reduce the chances of developing the disease compared with placebo, the new results of a randomized, placebo-controlled trial show. The findings from the vitamin D and type 2 diabetes D2D, trial were presented here at the American Diabetes Association 2019 scientific sessions by Anastasios Pittas, MD, from Tufts Medical Center, Boston, Massachusetts. Our study results did not show a statistically significant benefit for vitamin D in decreasing progression to type 2 diabetes in people who have sufficient levels, he said. However, he added that in a post hoc analysis we did see that vitamin D supplementation potentially had a benefit in those with very low vitamin D levels, 20% of the study population was deemed at least vitamin D insufficient as opposed to the remainder who were vitamin D sufficient. After 2.5 years of follow-up of over 99% of the participants, no significant difference was found in the development of diabetes between those taking vitamin D supplementation and those on placebo, P equals 0.12. The study was simultaneously published in the New England Journal of Medicine, along with an editorial by Deborah J. Wexler, MD, from Massachusetts General Hospital Diabetes Center and Harvard Medical School, Boston. Wexler notes that D2D is the largest of a number of randomized control trials looking at vitamin D supplementation to prevent progression to type 2 diabetes, and, as such, these results are long awaited. But she points out that the findings show that any benefit of vitamin D for diabetes prevention, if present, is modest and clearly does not pertain to a vitamin D sufficient population. Whether targeting populations with vitamin D levels below 12 ngml, many of whom have additional risk factors for diabetes, would have an effect on beta cell function and progression to type 2 diabetes remains unresolved. Trial participants had pre-diabetes, but most were not vitamin D insufficient. The D2D multicenter trial aimed to test whether vitamin D supplementation reduces the risk of the development of type 2 diabetes among adults at high risk for the disease, D, those with pre-diabetes. The authors note the biological plausibility of vitamin D status influencing risk for type 2 diabetes highlighting that both impaired pancreatic beta cell function and insulin resistance have been reported with low blood levels of 25-hydroxyvitamin D. They add that observational studies suggest a low blood vitamin D level is associated with diabetes risk, and this is further supported by mechanistic studies showing that vitamin D supplementation improved pancreatic beta cell function by 40%. In the study, a total of 24-23 participants across 22 U.S. cities were randomized, 12-11 to the vitamin D group and 12-12 to the placebo group, to receive 4,000 IU day of vitamin D or placebo, regardless of baseline serum 25-hydroxyvitamin D level. The 4,000 IU day dose was selected to balance safety and efficacy, and resulted in a large difference in the serum 25-hydroxyvitamin D level between the trial groups in the first two years. Effect of vitamin D supplementation in those with deficiency unknown in her editorial. Wexler remarks that the observed HR of 0.88 for the primary endpoint of the trial does not rule out a modest benefit of vitamin D. A larger and longer trial might be necessary to show a significant benefit in a vitamin D sufficient population, she explains. Wexler goes on to say that the effect might be greater if vitamin D supplementation was given to people who truly have a vitamin D deficiency, in comparison to participants in the D2D trial who largely did not. In the US, correlates of vitamin D insufficiency include older age, black, Asian or Hispanic race, and obesity, among other factors. Indeed, in the D2D trial, a post hoc analysis of data from the 103 participants with vitamin D deficiency, 12 ngml, showed an HR for new onset diabetes with vitamin D supplementation of 0.38, 95% psi, 0.18, 0.80, compared with placebo, she stresses. But Wexler adds that, overall, in a pre-specified subgroup analysis of those who did not have sufficient levels, the HR in participants with a level of vitamin D 20 ngml was essentially the same as that in participants with a sufficient level of E 20 ngml or higher, 0.87 and 0.89, respectively. It is noted that other large trials from Japan, the United States, and Norway have shown similar HRs to the D2D trial with a range of 0.87 to 0.9.
ABA 2019 Scientific Sessions. Presented June 7, 2019. And Engel J. Med. Published online June 7, 2019. Abstract Pittas has disclosed no relevant financial relationships. Wexler has sat on the Data Monitoring Committee for Oralson.